Okay, today we're going to be reassembling an Ithaca 4E Fluez. This is a um, earlier model of uh, Ithaca 4E, and it's a really beautiful gun based on the serial number. This was manufactured uh, around 1917. Um, and again, just it's really amazing to look at the machine work that was done or the artistry work that was done back then uh, during a period of time when they uh, were probably using uh, water power to drive all the uh, machining and milling machines that they're going to be working with. All right, so on this one, there's a couple of things here that we'll go over that are a lot of fun. Um, but uh, to begin with, let's start with um, the, the way that this mechanism is going to work here for the top lever. That's going to be very important. So one of the things that uh, you'll do is if you're re disassembling this, is to make sure you'll, you get this in order. You'll first notice that uh, this is the uh, cam and it's grooved out. And you'll also notice that the screw is grooved out. Well, when this is assembled in then against the uh, top lever, your top lever spring actually, uh, that post is gonna be setting down in there in that groove on the screw. So very important, uh, the first thing you'll do on a disassembly is to uh, take the tension off the top lever spring and then what you'll do then is you can go ahead and unscrew this. All right, so that's probably one of the, the big gotchas here on this particular one is uh, to make sure that you get the order of that correct. All right, so to begin with, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drop in the firing pin. And actually, we'll go ahead and put a little bit of grease around all this. Next, then we'll go ahead and drop in uh, the hammer striker. And this is just going to drive down in there. Okay. Uh, next, what we're going to do is go ahead and assemble in your top lever locking bolt here. And I'm just using a lithium grease on this. We'll do is go ahead and put in uh, the cam. Okay. Now this has got some pins here that have to be lined up correctly and you can kind of feel when you've got them in there to start and once you've done that go ahead and drop the screw in here and that screw will uh, go ahead and pull that together you can also tap it and uh, Pull it in as well. Okay. So again, now one of the things that you want to watch and make sure is that, um, again, reminding on that uh, screw that 
you have that screw positioned in a way that that top lever, um, the cam actually, or that spring actually sets in there and helps keep that top lever screw from backing out. The Knicks, um, were, they changed that just a little bit and they used it to where you actually had to kind of tap in on the metal. The metal is kind of soft there. And so what you do is you tap it in um, between the screw and that lug or, and, the, and the piece there. And it, the metal would actually kind of tap in uh, to the metal there to keep it from moving out. This one's going to work a little bit differently to where to keep that from backing out. Uh, they uh, groove that screw uh, to where it won't back out. All right, so uh, next here on this is the uh, uh, the top lever spring um, that we can go ahead and assemble now. Now on this one in particular, we I did have to make a tool uh, for this. Um, and what I did was, it's a pretty simple design. Um, all I did is I just have two piece, pieces of 3 8 aluminum. Um, and I believe I just used uh, just some standard stock and groove this. So the idea behind this is that this, when this comes down and compresses the spring, you're going to want to make sure that that hole for your top that's going to hold your top lever spring is completely clear. And this is the screw that's going to go down in there. And so you want to make sure that when you groove this piece out that that's completely free. So I have probably 30 thousandths around it so that this screw can drop in there freely when the spring is compressed. Um, you probably will have to uh, uh, work it just a little bit. Um, I probably will redesign this um, to some extent uh, to keep it from moving off, but in all fairness, it, it moves, uh, moves pretty quickly. Okay. So we're ready to go ahead and assemble all this together. Now these springs, um, these were actually okay. I think the gunsmith that had this, I bought this from a buddy of mine that I shoot with, and it was uh, it was just really immaculate inside. Um, so these springs, maybe he'd already replaced them, but you can get these springs from uh, Emmerich Gun Supplies. Um, and a lot of these parts are, inter some of these parts, not all, some of these parts are interchangeable with the side-by-side -side fluids like this right here, uh, this little um, top lever set uh, spring screw can uh, can be is uh, interchangeable. So what we'll do, this is going to go down inside like that. And that is going to sit right about there. So this isn't, uh, obviously this isn't uh, you know, real high tech there, but you can kind of see there that the screw will have free clearance in there. And I might even just go ahead and bring this down just a little bit more just to make sure that uh, the spring is completely compressed all the way down. Now again, I just want to emphasize when you do this and you put this screw down in there and you start to screw it in, if it doesn't 
if it has any resistance, just stop. Uh, don't force this in there. This should just screw in uh, freely without any resistance um, other than maybe just the, uh, see right there, so I might be off of it just a little bit. Looks like I need to wiggle this over here some. <coughs> you got it. I'm going to check. should be centered. I'm just looking here at the top. I can see in between here the threads roll down. Everything is in good shape there. So now all you'll do is you'll just take the tension off. So this is probably the only step. And like I said, this isn't uh, you know, very high tech or anything here, uh, but it gets the job done. Other than that, um, you won't need anything uh, any specialty tools or anything to assemble or disassemble uh, this gun. It's a pretty straightforward and easy gun to, <clears throat> to work with. So that's really all there is to it. Just sort of sets in there and holds that spring in for the top lever. Okay. All right, from here then what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and put in uh, the cam, I mean for the, uh, this, uh, this, we're just going to back this off, okay, and put a little bit of, now this, when you, when you do this, it's easy to see where the, the setting was, uh, but what I'm going to do is, once I sort of get this positioned, I'm going to uh, go ahead <coughs> and use the barrel as a guide for about uh, the position I need to work with on that. So what I mean, what I'm talking about is on this uh, lever, in terms of the travel for this, what I'm going to do is actually use the barrel to help me kind of get a spot for where that ought to be. The way this works is this is just going to lock down in. Okay. So this, what I'm going to do is I'll just move this down all the way to where it touches, and I'm also going to set uh, this. I really actually don't even need to use this for now. Uh, but the way this is going to work is that lug now is positioned in there. So what happens is, is when you cock it, uh, there's a spring on the bottom of the plate that's going to press this down, and that's going to drop in here. And you can kind of see where that's already, it's, you know, it's half mooned in here. This is actually the, uh, the bolt. Well, this will come back. This then has a, a pin on it here. And that's going to drop in holding this, uh, holding this back. So to, to get it positioned, I'm just going to set it in there like that, right about there. And you may need to, uh, after you do all this, uh, you may need to come back and make some additional adjustments. But that ought to get you uh, pretty close uh, with where... Uh, where you want this uh, to be set. And again, that's probably going to be pretty tight. Good chance this, this could back out. And uh, so that's one of the things in terms of maintenance that you might need to, need to work with. All right, so this is going to be in need to be pointed. Now that groove is going to be pointed inward. So go ahead and put him in there. I need to press that spring down. And that'll go in like that. 
once it meets that spot. And then what you'll need to do is using the space here, you flip flipping down like that. And now then you've got your, your trip spring set there for your barrel. Okay. All right. Uh, for the um, hammer, uh, the hammer is pretty straightforward. There's really not a lot here uh, that has to be done in regards to the hammer. I didn't make any uh, specialized tools. Uh, the one thing you do want to just make sure is that you do have that spring compressed. Uh, that being your main spring, you want to make sure that that main spring is compressed and lined up so that your uh, pin uh, can travel all the way through. To help me line that up, I'm going to use a couple little cheater uh, dowels here uh, to help me with that. Um, and I'm just going to use some pretty liberal on my lithium grease. Pin. Go ahead and get him started. I did run this on my lathe uh, and took uh, 600 grit just to uh, clean up the edges here from previous uh, work on that. It looks like that uh, someone had uh, done some work on it. And this actually has uh, right in there. for that to pass through. What I'm doing is I'm just setting that pin right flush. So once I get uh, get her started and compressed, um, will be good. So um, for this again, there, there wasn't not, not anything real high tech here at all with regards to uh, um, how I'm going to compress this. I'm just going to make sure that that hole's lined up. I'm going to use a dowel, about a 3 8 dowel, and then I'm just going to compress this down. And this is where it'd be good to have another pair of hands. And I'll just compress that right about there. And just compress it. And all I'm doing is I'm just looking to see that I'm clear here on my hole to get that pin. So all it needs to do is sort of get started. Okay, so all I've done is I've just compressed that spring to where I can see that I've got clear travel. Okay, so once you get it uh, through, you'll go ahead and tap and just be careful not to hit your And at that point then, uh, you're pretty good to go. Once you get it started on the side, you can go ahead and take the tension off. You don't have much more to go. And at that point then, uh, what I would do is just use a wood dowel and uh, maybe finish tapping it. This way you don't have much to go there at all. See how it just popped through on that? So I would get this. Now, this one doesn't have... Uh, you know, kind of like the other Ithacas, um, or even the L.C. Smith, this doesn't have a screw and uh, that pin that goes through on the hammer. It doesn't have a little locking screw that goes down to keep that pin from moving around. So just remember a lot of these guns were, um, you know, a lot of those designs and came to Nick. He designed a lot of things. Um, I think, uh, you know, in general, uh, personally, I think I like the way that this cam works and it locks in there a little bit better than the Nick, in my opinion. The Nick, you have to actually, as I mentioned before, if you take a punch, 
to get that screw to stay stayed in there, you take a punch and you sort of tap them in together and, and blend that all together. Um, so there you go. There's the, uh, the Ithaca 4E. Okay, so on this one, what I did was I redesigned the stock a little bit. Um, this is the stock that I'm going to be moving it to, and you're going to notice I uh, probably can't get this in the, in the picture all the way. Uh, but what I did was I changed um, the grip, um, and in doing so, of course, the original, you know, the original stocks kind of come back more at a, at a uh, sort of a field stock. And uh, for the Ithaca enthusiast or purist, <laughs> I did not cut the original trigger guard uh, to do this. All right, so I just, when I made this stock, what I did um, was I modified um, the I just made another trigger guard and so what I did was uh, I guess I, I'm not ready to put all this together but in, anyway so this is so what I did was I just uh, recast um, a trigger guard using the original trigger guard and a sand casting um, I've experimented with a, a variety of different uh, alloys and uh, the one I, I'm starting to like the best is this is ZMAC um, and depending on how you polish it um, it looks a little rough I'll show you the, what it looked like before here in just a moment. Um, pretty, but it's pretty easy to work with. You only need about a thousand degrees uh, for your furnace. And ZMAC, I didn't even use any flux. Um, I made my casting, and then once I polished it out, I used some flat wheels to polish it. I used these were the original screws, and I just used this one for my center match. And so when this all gets assembled, uh, this fits in here like this. And then you still have. Um, with the with the ZMAC, like I said, it still looks a little antiquish, right? I mean, it's not an exact match or anything, but it still looks a little antiquish, and uh, seemed to work for me. All right. Um, the only other step here is on the. Uh, this is just the uh, the sear, and I'm not ready to put that in there. Like I said, I've got just a little bit more fitting to do on the uh, on the wood. So there you go. There's an Ithaca 4E, uh, a beautiful gun. Um, Okay, so for the casting, this is just ZMAC. I just used on this one, like I said, it's very easy to pour. I just used two vent holes. I used two uh, for my sprue. I split it out, the two branches, and, uh, and it, it just poured really easy. And then after polishing, like I said, I just used some flat wheels, polished it, and it uh, worked really well for me.